Hello to all the students. Welcome to Global Online. Here we are back with our NTA UGC NET Paper 1 preparation for 2022 batch. As you all are aware that the, the schedule is out and your examinations are falling on a specific date, date. So we have decided to bring an entire revision series for paper one, which will be consisting of your MCQs, okay, quick revision like, which will help you to understand, get the variety of questions from different unit and at one go, which will help you to prepare yourself best for your upcoming examination. The only thing you have to do is you have to watch this entire video without fail, take a note of important points and keep yourself you know preparing for the examination so yes before we go ahead a quick understanding that what does global online has more to give you for uh, encouraging you to ensure that your preparation is doing well and it's going well so we have a quick revision pdf for paper one which consists of 2000 plus mcqs updated mcqs current affairs previous year question paper and most repeated questions which you can get at the given whatsapp number the fees is 599 for paper two also we have notes and mcqs available the list of paper two is available on the screen Though the fees is 1700 but right now 25% of discount is going on on this. And you can get this particular material and notes at a cost of 1275. So you can get in touch with us on the given WhatsApp number and ensure that you are preparing well with all the revisions for paper one as well as paper two. Start with the first question. In which of the following modes of assessment, the potential for increasing intrinsic motivation is optimum? So it is formative assessment, it is computer test testing based assessment, it is summative assessment, or is it norm based test uh, testing assessment? So the uh, question says that in which of the following modes of assessment, the potential for increasing intrinsic motivation is optimum? So where the motivation level, intrinsic, it means the one is from inner, inner, that is one is from inside is optimum. So which of the following uh, assessment tells that the intrinsic motivation, you know, uh, will be optimum where you will find the potential for intrinsic motivation. So options are given in front of you, A, B, C, D. So which is the right option? So yes, by it now, you should be able to understand the right option. Yes. So it is formative assessment. So we know that formative assessment is a continuous assessment. It is based on, you know, uh, uh, continuous evaluation of the students. And this is the uh, assessment where there is a potential of intrinsic, the in, you know, the inner self-motivation in order to progress, in order to develop. And hence the right answer is formative assessment based evaluation. Question number two, the concept of proximal development related to educational communication was developed by whom? Smith, Freud, or Cutler, sorry, Lee Vitugosi or Al Albert Bandura. It's Albert Bandura, sorry. It's so who has given this particular uh, proximal development? So if you remember the concept of proximal development, so this is something which the child knows, something which the child does not, I mean to say does not know, it is unknown, but with the help of peer group or with the help of teacher's assistance, this is the area or this is the zone of proximal development where the child understands, you know, certain things. So who has given this concept of proximal development? That is related to educational communication. So yes, uh, ap apart from the given options, the zone of proximal development is given by Lee Vitugosi. So this is, you know, this is a concept or this is a concept of proximal development, which was brought by Lee Vitugosi uh, as a concept of what? As a concept of educational communication, concept related to educational communication. Now, a researcher, which while reporting his or her research findings, so when a researcher reports his uh, research findings, give weightage to stakeholders' perspective in a qualitative research theme. So this involves what? A researcher, while reporting his or her research finding, give weightage to stakeholders' perspective in a qualitative research theme. So it, it is what violation of ethical norms, bias and prejudice, disclosure of reality situation, inappropriate interference of others in research. So what basically it is, okay? So whether it is violation of ethical norms, bias and prejudice, disclosure of reality situation or inappropriate interference of others in research. So what it is totally called as. Read the question very carefully. A researcher while reporting his or her research findings give weightage to stakeholders perspective in a qualitative research theme. So here it is what, what the stakeholders, it is very clear. Weightage is given to stakeholders. Stakeholders, it means the people who are, you know, related or people who are um, 
a part of a research directly indirectly so what it will be called as okay so in such say case it will be called as disclosure of reality so perspective we are telling that we are talking about perspective no so it is nothing but it is called as disclosure of reality situation next we have is effective oral communication demands what so if you are talking about oral communication it talks about what it tells about self confidence it talks about long pauses consistent practice business like approach knowing the audience or it is also called as aggressive questioning so what it is called as now here you can go with elimination round which i always tell you so confidence can be seen with the help of what points so you can focus on that points and you can go ahead so when we see the above points it so which is the, which is the one which indicates what you know the confidence so let's see um, okay so we have uh, self confidence long pauses consistent practice so uh, you can go with elimination as i said or you can try your own method to come up with the answer okay yes so let's see the right option is option number d so if you see from all the given uh, options long pauses is something which is negative aggressive question is something which is negative which is easy to understand rest you may not be aware but long pauses and aggressive questioning that is b and f so b is cancel f is cancel f is cancel something you know here option number d is the right answer okay now in the linear model of communication the expected result is what the psychological disruption removal of physical noise high level of obstruction or semant semantic accuracy so what is linear model of communication now everyone knows linear model of communication is one way model where senders only plays an important role so in this what is the expected uh, you know uh result what what is the expected result psychological disruption removal of physical noise high level of obstruction or semantic accuracy so yes in linear model the expected result is semantic accuracy now it means that it is used to be to avoid the message being distorted in any manner that has a direct communication process so it is you know this semantic accuracy is basically the meaning is that it is used to avoid the message been distorted uh, in any manner in any form through a direct communication process so the right answer is the semantic accuracy now in identify the features of learner behavior which are associated with understanding level now the, as i said level of memory questions are coming but understanding level of memory questions are more so the student uh, renders the facts and information in his or her own words the student the student immediately recalls the facts the student gives own examples in order to explain the point the student interprets the meaning in various ways the student correctly reproduces the sequence taught so which of the following you know uh, concepts talks about what it talks about the features of learners behavior which is associated with understanding level of teaching so yes you can hear again you can go with elimination round uh you can keep a concentration on that and indicates you know uh what exactly it is about yes so the right answer is yes so the students rendering the facts no doubt the student immediately recalling the facts this is memory level so this will uh, odd man out so b if you see even if it is odd man out it's crossed out the student gives explanation in his point yes understanding level the student interprets the meaning in various ways yes the student correctly reproduces that is again memory level so here b and e are the eliminated ones and hence the right answer will be option number d then we have seventh question the share of which of the following sources of elect energy in electricity generation in india at present is least i'll repeat the question read the question very carefully the share of which of the following sources of energy in electricity generation in india at present is least whether it is thermal whether it is solar whether it is wind solar and wind hydro or nuclear so which is least thermal solar wind hydro and nuclear so yes if from the given least they are asking about least 
so from the given the least is the nuclear we have just 2.5 sorry 2.4 percent of electricity generated in india so it is very least okay you can keep the percentage as per the recent data the percentage is just 2.4 then which of the following terms is related to digital learning environment for design so digital learning environment for design is it e with one e acharya e kalpa or e yantra i have just recently taken a special lecture on digital initiatives and in that this concept was added so which of the is you know related to digital learning for environment e vidwan e acharya e kalpa or e yantra so yes the right answer is e kalpa is the e kalpa sorry is the uh, is related to digital learning environment for designs the next one we have is in which of the following one nation one standard is mentioned as the mantra to ensure national standard and national standards and quality this also was done i last week i took you know when digital initiative that time also i repeated this i have taken an earlier also a session on uh, higher education where i have re revised the policies also where we we saw this which of the following is one nation one standard is mentioned as the mantra to ensure quality standard standard national standards and quality so whether it is national policy whether it is uh, national policy on education 1986 868 or whether it is national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship or niti aayog so which of them stands you know as the one nation one standard so yes it is national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship we have done this in the lecture also in digital initiative also in the class also so it was national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship that is 2015 okay now which of the following provides the everything uh, vision that guides research in socially relevant area so which of the following from the given which of the following talks about what the uh, vision for you know for guide that guides research into socially relevant area so which of which among them is the one which is uh, right the the options given is you know arelia the option is imprint the option is nirf or option is swayam prabha so which of them is right okay where which of them is considered as you know the one which guides the research into socially relevant area yes so that is imprint it is nothing but impacting research innovation and technology so it is impacting research innovation and technology be please keep in mind again you know again and again this these are expected questions or most repeated questions in any form so you have to just ensure that you know the things very well uh, and this should be you know in any form they are going to give you the you know uh, questions in such a way that it will come in some or other way okay now national uh, sorry non uh, traditional teaching and learning strategies lays emphasizes on what i'll repeat again the non traditional teaching and learning strategies lays emphasizes on what students need based resources material resource material and learning standards developing skills attitude and values promoting in box thinking process lecture based model acquiring knowledge necessary to respond creatively so which of the following uh, talks about you know the non traditional teaching and learning strategies which lays emphasizes on the following so whether it is students ba need based resource material and learning standards developing skills attitude and values promoting in box thinking lecture based model or acquiring knowledge necessary to respond creatively so which among them you know considered as the strategies so whether it is uh, option number 1 2 3 4 so you can give the options also so here uh, you can just say the options okay you can this this may confuse you you can just go with the options okay non traditional teaching non traditional not traditional so it is non conventional you I mean it is you can take it as non traditional only don't don't get confused with the words so yes it is basically that is um, students need based resource material and standards then we have developing skills attitudes promoting in box no that is out box lecture based model no acquiring knowledge necessary to pro, pro, that is to respond creatively so this this these are the strategies which are non traditional okay now question number 12 we have done this when we were doing uh, environment uh, topic 
National Disaster Management Authority is an agency of what? Jal Shakti, Home Affairs, Earth Science, Housing and Urban Affairs. So which of them is considered as the National Disaster Authority uh, Management, sorry, Authority Agency? So yes, the right answer is Home Affairs. We have done this very well. You can go back and check our, uh, you know, uh, options of... Uh, Teaching aptitudes, the National Disaster Management Authority is one of the agency that is Jal Shakti, Home Affairs, Earth Science, Housing and Urban uh, Affairs. So the right answer is Home Affairs. Yes. Which of the following tools is a collaboration of a uh, collaboration for providing virtual classroom environment? So for virtual classroom environment, which of the following is used? That is whether we have a lab, whether we have a view, whether we have a tutor or whether we have, you know, a learner. So which of the following is um, used as a collaboration tool for providing virtual classroom? Uh, so that is what? What is the following called as? Okay, you will you can quickly think and, you know, let the answer come from everyone. So we will wait till then. So yes, we have a, that is a lab, a view, a tutor, a learner. So yes, the right answer for a collaboration for providing virtual classroom environment is a view that is Amrita virtual interactive e-learning world uh, by Amrita University, which is derived by Amrita University. Uh, and, you know, it is it includes uh, National Mission on ICT as well as Ministry of Human Resource Development. We have done this AVU also uh, very well. So here also the question is expected. So again, you have to be careful for this. Then in which level of teaching, lower level learning outcomes get focused? Now, see, I have taken teaching levels of memory definitely come. So you should be able to uh, give the answer in any form. I mean, so any type of question comes, you should be able to answer. In which level of teaching, lower level learning outcomes gets focused? So it's memory, understanding, reflective or autonomous. So which of them are, which of them is the right answer? Is it memory level, understanding level, reflective level or autonomous development level? So the right answer is yes. It is memory level, lower level out learning outcome. So it is lower level learning outcome we find in memory and higher level we find in reflective. Okay. Then, yes, the purpose of ICT used in education is to what? So what is the purpose of ICT? So the purpose of ICT is to attract the students, to make teaching interesting, to promote op sorry, to uh, optimize, to have optimized learning outcomes or to promote technology culture in teaching. So which of them is the purpose, reason of ICT? So yes, in education, you should be this answer is this question also, you know, is the repeated question, but many times students get confused. So yes, the one of the uh, way, uh, that is the purpose is optimize learning outcomes. Okay, so you just the question number one. Project Oscar is an is the initiative to provide free access to what? I'll repeat again. Project Oscar is the initiative to provide free access to what? Is it ebooks? Is it e-journals? Is it educational animations or is it online tutorial? The question talks about the question is basically from ICT. Project Oscar, an initiative to provide free access to what? Is it ebooks? Is it e journals? Is it educational uh, animations or is it online tutorial? So, the Project Oscar is an initiative in order to provide free access to educational animations. Now, what is this Project Oscar? Let's have a look at it. In case if any of the student is not aware, have a look. So, Project Oscar is an initiative which has been brought up by IIT Mumbai, that is Bombay to provide the free access to educational animations for teaching and learning concepts in the field of science as well as in the field of technology. The learning objects in this project range from the topics in various subjects, you know, that is from undergraduate to postgraduate level. The use of interactive animations ensures enhanced learning experience in regular classroom teaching as well as in distance education. So the project OSCAR, that is open source course where animation repository that is the uh, that is the acronym oscar is an acronym and you have a full form of this but remember the full form also the question can be in any form so i'll repeat again the oscar acronym oscar stands for open source courseware animations repository 
which provides a web-based interaction or interactive animations and simulations that we use as learning objects that is called as LOs. The learning objects are topics in science and engineering at college level and maths and science at a school level. Students and teachers can view, run and download these learning objects in order to enhance the learning experience or teaching learning process. So yes, Project Oscar is basically an educational animation. Okay, question number two. Question number two talks about which of the following is an e-learning platform in India. So they are asking about what? They are asking about e-learning platform in India. So whether it is Diksha, whether it is Swayam, whether it is N -E -M -E -I -C -T, or it is Padshala. Sorry, the question, I am extremely sorry. Which of the following is not that how? See, the mistake which has happened from me, it, you even you can be overlooked. The question is clearly visible, but say, sometimes it happens, you know, in a hurry or, you know, in uh, just in order to come up to the question, answers, we just skip the important part of the question. So don't do such mistakes. Which of the following is not an e-learning platform? So they are giving given us the options that is Diksha, Soyam and e Partshala and NM, uh, NM EICT. Now they are asking of that which of the following is not an e-learning platform. So we have to from the given list or from the chosen list, you have to state that which is not an e-learning platform. The one which is not an e-learning platform is NMEICT. That is a national mission on education. Sorry, national mission uh, of education in information and communication technology. Now, Diksha, the first option that is an online knowledge sharing platform for school education. We have Swayam, that is a massive open online course uh, platform in India that offers a wide range of courses. We have NMI, that is National Mission Education and, sorry, information through information and communication technology. It is to encourage the use of information and communication uh, technology in the field of education. Whereas e Shala is an online portal that provides educational for the classes first to 12. So basically, this is all, you know, if you compare all the options, uh, Diksha, Soyam and e Shala are the one which are a part of online platform. Whereas NMEICT -N -N is not one among them. Next is the list they have given. You have two lists in the form of mass the following. It talks about NDEAR, that is the uh, schemes or the bodies. Then we have Swam Prabha, NIOS and Diksha. And the second one you have is list two, uh, that is the, you have a definition. So let's see list one is what, list two is what. So list one is N -E -N -D -E -A -R, Swayam Prabha, NIOS and Diksha. So which of them matches? You have uh, a minute's time to match one match the following. And then we can. Go for it. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone will be able to come up with the right answer. Yes, let's let's see what is the right answer. You have got a minute's time in order to match your columns. So yes, we have option number three. That is um, A stands for what? A stands for uh, option number three. We have digital educational architecture. We have B as option number four. That is Swayam Prabha is a TV channel, which is a 34 directly home channel. Then option number C is one that is NIOS, which stands for the distance learning and Diksha is nothing but online sharing, knowledge sharing platform. Just now we have done. Okay. So let's see about every one of them very quickly. So NDEAR refers to National Digital Education Architecture, the objective. As I told, every scheme, every body, you should be knowing very well the objective. So the objective is to develop the educational infrastructure in order to bring, you know, new education ecosystem with digital foundation with it leads to what self-governance of all the parties involved, particularly the state and the center. So I am Prabha, as I said, 34 direct direct uh, to home channels in order to education uh, telecast the educational program. And IOS, it's National Institute of Open Learning, which helps to facilitate distance learning. And Diksha is nothing but a knowledge sharing, sharing platform, which is used to provide school education. 
with the help of distance mode, which we have done just now in the form of uh, online platform question also. Okay. Now, now question number four. Question number four stands for VLOG. So now what is this VLOG? So whether it is the security, it's sorry, whether it is a secured uh, logging system or, you know, it is basically um, virtual logging communication. Is it a video blogging? In ICT, there is nothing called as VLOG. Okay. So now they have say, saying that they have given the options also. And uh, they have told you to, you know, match the options from the given acronym. So VLOG is what? Very secured a login system. Is it a virtual login communication? Is it a video blogging? Or it is there is nothing called as VLOG. So what it stands for? So VLOG stands for video blogging. So what is this B video blogging basically? So VLOG stands for video blog or it is also called as video log. So this kind of blogging has the content of videos. It is posted by the creator, the one who has created it. And the video blogger and uh, so who is a video blogger? He expresses his or thoughts or ideas, opinions through these videos on a particular subject. So the subject of interest can be tourism. The subject of interest can be education. The subject of interest can be technology. The subject of interest can be politics. So any any subject of interest can be, you know, can be used as what as a content part of the video in order to express express the person who has the blogger's uh, experience or you know the knowledge or opinions so that is called as nothing but it is called as video blogging next we have is which of the following which of these pairing below is incorrect about educational institu uh, in initiatives through ICT so instead of C now this question can be form of you know match the following but then they want to highlight the odd man out so there is definitely a odd man out over here so they are saying that the following initiatives are with one the database and national researchers network so should should the access to you know qualitative electronic journal resource diksha school education infrastructure content and tools and nishtha that is capacity building programs for teachers and principal just now also we have done we have done this questions currently we are doing some repetitive questions so every now and then these questions are coming as a part of your you know uh, question so you should be very confirm about it the answer should not go wrong so vidwan is it a database so shot should the is it is a research related uh, uh option or diksha is it you know related to school infrastructure uh con sorry school education infrastructure or content or tool so basically it is what which one is odd man out so the one which is odd man out is you know shot uh, should the which is access to qualitative electronic journal resources so let's see basically shot shuddhi so what is telling it is telling that it is an access to qualitative electronic research resources journal resources so basically shot shuddhi is nothing but a plagiarism detection software which was launched by Unis union minister of human resource development it is not for accessing e resources journals it is an plagiarism software for all the universities in in india uh, the Ministry of Education, Government of India has started this initiative to function since 2019. It is the Eshot Siddhu, which is, you know, giving an access to the qualitative journals <coughs> resources. So basically, it is nothing but a plagiarism detection software. And whereas it was given as electronic journal. So that is not Shot Shuddhi. It is o e Shot Siddhu. Siddhu. Is it clear? Now, next one. We have following statements given. You need to find out which is the correct statement. NKN stands for the New Knowledge Network. Moves are offline courses. National Supercomputing Mission is a government initiative of India. And clock rate CPU is measured as in gigabytes, whereas Param Shivai is a supercomputer. So which of the following stands to be, you know, the correct statement? You have to shortlist the correct statement. The statements are, you know, NKM, that is New Knowledge Network, Moves, that is Offline Courses, National Super Computing Mission, uh, Initiative of Government of India, or Clock Rate, that is CPU, uh, measured in gigabytes, and Param Shivai, a supercomputer. So they have given the codes. You have to match the statements with the code. So yes, the one which is the, the statements which are correct are what? RC, that is National Supercomputing Mission, is Government of India Initiative. 
and E stands for Param Shivai, which is a supercomputer. So let's see now NKN, which stands for what National Knowledge Network, whereas here it was given as New Knowledge Network. Moves are not online, sorry, they are not offline courses, they are online courses. National Computing, we know it is an initiative by Government of India. India and clock rate of CPU that is in CPU it is not measured it is measured in gigahertz and not gigabytes it was given as gigabytes so see this small small you know things remember very well so like for example you know that you are studying memory as gigabytes gigabytes so that th term is very uh, captured in your mind so you will say okay yes clock rate CPU is measured in gigabytes only no it's not gigabytes it is gigahertz so you have to be very very careful okay now, next one is a slogan. The slogan, a tree, sorry, a tree for each child is coined as what? So, we have a slogan mentioned over here, a tree for each child. So, it is social forestry program. It is clean air program. It is soil conservation program or is it environmental uh, protection program? So, what is the program? Sorry, what is the slogan? A tree for each child stands for. So, the slogan from the given below, a tree for each child, was coined for which of the following initiatives? So, it was coined for the initiative of social forestry program. It was basically meant for what? Social forestry program. Let's see. Uh, yes, sorry. So, this is nothing but a slogan which was initiated by social forestry, pro initiated for social forestry program. Then we have list one and list two. So list one, we have ozone hole, we have greenhouse effect, we have natural gas, uh, natural hazards, and we have sustainable development. In list two, we have an example that is tsunami, UV radiations, ultraviolet radiations. Uh, then we have methane and ecocentrism. So you have to match the pairs. Ozone hole is for what? Greenhouse is for what? Natural hazard is for what? And sustainable development is, stands for what? So let's see, we have to match it, uh, all the codes. So when we talk about list one and list two, so basically list one is for what? So list one is, you know, uh, list one and list two, the right option is option number A. So ozone he, uh, hole is for UV radiations. When you have greenhouse effect, so that is methane, that is a greenhouse gas. Then we have a natural hazards that is in the form of what? Natural tsunami. Yes, and sustainable development is ecocentrism. Now, what is this term ecocentrism? In case if you're hearing it for the first time, please note uh, make a note of it. It is a term which is used by environmental philosophers, the one who deeply think about environment and the ecologist to denote a natural, a nature-centered as opposed to human center. So something which is centered uh, towards the nature rather than human centered or system of values. So basically it is towards the environment. Okay. Now we have next option is the tragedy. The phrase tragedy of commons is in the con context of what? So basically uh, what do you mean by this phrase that is the tragedy of commons for what? Is it tragic event related to damage? Is it which is caused by poisonous gases? Is it tragic conditions of poor people? Is it degradation of renewable free access resources? Or is it a climate change? Basically, the tragedy, uh, the sorry, the face tra tragedy of commons is in the context of what? Whether it is tragic, uh, tragic event related to damage caused by release of poisonous gas? Is it tragic? Tragedic conditions of poor people is a degradation of renewable free access, uh, access resources or is it climate change? So the, the one which is the phase, phrase related to, it is basically the degradation of renewable free access resource. So the tragedy of commons is a problem in economics that occurs when individual neglects the well-being of the society in order to, you know, uh, have the personal gain. So you are degrading the renewable free uh, access resources. Now we have question number 10. Women are closer to nature than men. So which kind of perspective is this? So when the uh, statement says, the above statement, they have given a statement and they have told to list the statement. So what is the statement related to? Which kind of perspective is this? Is it realist, realist or is it essentialist? Is this feminist or it is deep ecology? So women are closer to nature. It's related to what? Okay, realist, essentialist, feminist or deep ecology. So basically it is related to what? It is related to essentialist. Now, if you are not aware of all these options, I'll explain you all the options first. 
So when I say realist, it's a person who accepts the situation and is prepared to deal with the situation accordingly. So we call it as realist. Essentialist, it means the one who is essential. Like for example, here it means that the object have a set of attributes, the qualities that are necessary to their identity. And in Western thoughts, Plato's idealism held that all the things have such essence, that is idea or form. So essentialist is you know, the women who are closer to the nature as compared to men. Feminist, the one who supports the equal right for women. And deep ecology, it's something humans must have changed their relationship to nature. So you have to have a deep understanding or bonding towards nature. Yes, now question number 11. State in India spending the largest amount on primary education. So as per the uh, given, uh, I mean, it's not about statistics, it's about the higher states, which is spending a largest amount on primary education is what? Is this the state of Maharashtra, Kerala, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, which state it is? So basically, the state which spends a higher amount on education is the state of Kerala. It is a sta the state of Kerala, which has a higher spending on primary education. Now, yes, so now we have four or five questions which are related to your uh, alphabet coding. So just ensure that you are, you know, ready with your uh, notebooks. So basically, if you remember now today, I have prepared for you, but this is how this question should be solved. So first thing in order to solve these questions, you need to have your alphabets, all the 20 alphabets in sequence ready. You can't play with it. Okay. So uh, now normally what uh, I have taught you is that you better write it in the pair of five, 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 okay, five and one, okay, or if not possible, 10, 10 and 26, if it is whichever amount of space you have, okay, this type of alphabet, so you, if you want to count the number, it becomes easier for you. So that is the, you can follow the technique or, you know, the method you are using in order to come to the answer very quickly. So normally, see, what I do is, this is what technique I follow. So I just list out the alphabets in the table format. Okay, I just list them horizontally and vertically, but it becomes easier to see. So if I see them horizontally, O. So if I see O, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we see T, then we see E. It's backward. I mean, sometimes it will definitely match up, but still there is a lot of distance and there is no consistency. Still, let us go for next one is P. Uh, we have P, then we have U, 1, 2, 3, 4 it is. And here it also, also O, no, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 4, 4 and U and F. So U, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here you had 10, gap of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here also you gap had a gap of 10. Okay, so let's see Q. Q, yes, after Q we have v so one two three four okay this works and then g uh so there should be a gap of 10 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay now r so r after r we have w one two three four five okay but here it was four if i'm not wrong one, two, three, four, fifth it was, okay. So, an R it was one, two, three, four, fifth, okay. And W then H. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still, it is coming same. Okay, now see, if you see, but there is no connection. So, O, P. So, O, P, Q, R. All are in sequence. So, yes, next sequence will be S, definitely. Now, W and X. So after, uh, sorry, after the, the distance between X, uh, S and X will be, should be fifth alphabet. No, so one, two, three, four, fifth. So yes, fifth alphabet. And the distance between X and I should be 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So that is how you got the answer as X, I, uh, sorry, S, X, I. I hope it is very clear. You need to check horizontally and vertically. Horizontally only we got. So we didn't do vertically. But vertically also you will come to this answer. I will show you how. Just a minute. See. O, P, Q, R, S, T. So O, P, Q, R, S, T. It's more easier. S. T. So T, U, V, X. Uh, v, sorry. V, W, X. Yes. E, F, G, H. Uh, e, F, G, H, I. 
H I. So yes, so the, both the ways it is one and the same. But definitely, one answer will be come. You should be very careful with it. Okay. I hope it is very clear with everyone. <coughs> Next is again the alphabet question. So you have five alphabets now. So let's see. You have alphabet. So now just see now. Like for example, just randomly looking at them, see they are all common sequence. A B C. Okay. After that we get D. Okay, then F G H I. So F G H I again. It is in sequence. K K L M N sequence. P Q R S yes sequence. U V W X. So U V W X. It is in sequence. So we have this option also given. So it's easy, much easier. I mean to say, I'm just per just to make your per practice perfect. I have brought some easy questions to alphabet. But yes, once it is done, next time we will take some uh, next class in the part B. We can put or add some difficult questions. Then we have next is again the question. Or here for single alphabet, there is no need to draw the table. You just have to check. You know the sequence. So a a gap of two is D, a gap of two is G. A gap of two is J, a gap of two is M. Okay, a gap of two is P. So a gap of two will become S. So it is the right answer will be yes. A very easy question. Very easy. Okay. Now Z. Uh, that is Z. A gap of one is X. A gap of two. Uh, no one is U. A gap of uh, three is Q. Okay. Then the gap of Four is L, then the gap of five maybe one, two, three, four, five. It should be F. So yes, the answer should be F. Yes. Now next is very easy questions. You don't have to. So that's the reason we could do it very easily. C. Then we have E. So gap of one. Then we have uh, I. So it's a gap of three. Then we have K. So it's again a gap of one. Then we have O. So it's again the gap of three. Then we have uh, one. Then Q, no? So gap of three will become one and three. So R, S, T. So your answer will be U. So yes, the right answer is U. Is it clear? Now we have uh, missing terms. So let us see J, K, A, K, B, L, L, C, M, M, D, N. So if you see J, K, L, M, J, K, L, M in sequence. So N will be the next. A, B, C, D, E, yes. K, L, M, N, O, P, M, O. So N E O. So do we have an option of N E O? Yes, N E O is marked. So this the alphabet sequence was very simple. The reason to keep it this simple, anyone who has not practiced it can at least you know practice is doing it quickly. So tomorrow we can come up with the more questions for uh, sequencing also. Okay. Now question number seventeen in a classroom, content produced by a specific user will lead to what? If a specific person is producing a content, will lead to a personality development. Content filtering, personalization, or general academic in integration. So, what will be that called as content produced for a specific user? So, that will be called as what specific user? No, so you are producing a content for a specific person. So, it is called as personalization. Okay, yes. Now, that now anyone who has not understood personalization, it means it is for personal use. And why it is like that? Because it is written very clearly. It is used for a, sorry, it is produced for a specific user. Now, consider the following sizes of computer memory and arrange them in ascending order. So, megabytes, gigabytes, kilobytes and terabytes. So, you have to arrange them into ascending, descending, ascending. Just remember, ascending, it goes on increasing. So, if you get, you know, yes, I will just wait. Then I'll come to the right answer. Yes, very good. So it is, uh, sorry, increasing order as I said. So please remember that it starts with kilobytes, then we have megabytes, then we have gigabytes, and then we have terabytes. So D should come last, but here both the options D is last. So you should match properly. So kilobyte is one which starts with, okay? Yes. Now, list two and list three. Now this is the, uh, sorry, list one and list two. This is a column. List one is one column. List two is two column. Basically, if you can see, it is on communication unit. So they are talking about prayer in silence. Teacher talking to students outside the classroom. The CEO of the company uses a circular to his subordinates. Issues a circular and rumors mongering among the employees of an organization. Mongering, it means uh, spreading among the employees. Okay, so which of them comes under what? Under the following uh, matching pair. So let's see what are the matching pairs and how it is matching up. Uh, Let's understand. 
prayer in silence teach teacher talking to the uh, student outside the classroom the ceo of the company issues a circular to its subordinate rumor mongering so it is communication you should be able to do it very rumors you, you should know so if you can even